So the video request for this week was mostly for photochemical smog. There are also quite a few requests for AAS. So I'll make a video for photochemical smog first and then if I get time I might make one for AAS. Um, the main thing I'm going to focus on is how to answer questions. However, I've identified three main questions that come up when talking about photochemical smog and by looking at those three um, we'll cover the whole topic really of, of photochemical smog and, and the important parts. So the first question that is, is the major question um, is, is state why the reaction of um, the nitrogen, nit sorry, nitrogen molecule N2 requires high temperatures. So this is usually a lead up question for photochemical smog. Um, and the idea is that that N2 molecule, if we were to draw it, looks a little bit like this. Um, it is a covalent molecule, but because of that triple bond, it is a very, very strong molecule. So it's uh, got a, a strong triple covalent bond. So covalent bond. And it's the reason why um, we don't have photochemical smog occurring all the time. Considering that 70% of our air is made up of nitrogen, um, nor normally you would say, okay, well, if it's 70% nitrogen, why aren't we getting photochemical smog everywhere? And the idea is that it is a very, very strong triple covalent bond. And so you require a large amount of thermal energy to disrupt that bond, um, to break it, so then it can react with something else. And so if you're answering this question, this would normally be a two to three mark question. You'd say that it was a strong triple covalent bond, and so it requires a high amount of thermal energy, thermal energy to disrupt the bond. And so that's getting us started off with uh, photochemical smog because that's the starting point, the idea that it will only happen when you've got that high amount of thermal energy um, and in case of where that's happening or at least with anthropogenic reasons, so anthropogenic meaning human based reasons, you've got the industrial um, furnaces where you've got high amounts of temperatures being used and you've also got internal combustion engines where there's also high amount of um, or high temperatures used that will allow that nitrogen in the air to react and, and break that bond and go on to react with something else. So that's that first question. The second question that comes up quite a bit, this is an example of an extended response. I've written out the whole thing to save time. This one was from a past exam um, and it was approximately seven marks. Remember with the extended responses, uh, one or two marks would be used for, for communication and the rest for the actual um, answering the content and it says explain how one human activity has contributed to an increase in the levels of nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere and explain one action taken to reduce the levels of nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere so that's we we're just saying that that human activity the idea that we've got industrial furnaces or internal combustion engines where it's providing that high temperatures um, allowing that nitrogen uh, molecule to to break and react um, so this is this is our first important key part of that question, um, and the next part is increase the amount of nitrogen oxides. So how how is that human activity increasing nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere? And then we need to talk about one action that's going to reduce um, the nitrogen oxides. So there's quite a bit of information here. The very first thing we would, would note that our human activity is either industrial furnaces. or internal combustion engines. And so then the next point would say is, okay, well, how are they increasing the levels? Well, um, the high temperatures will allow N2 uh, to react with, not, with oxygen in the air. And this forms a nitrogen or nitric oxide or nitrogen monoxide. And then you can put in an equation for that to, to show that reaction. Now that equation is in balance. We do need to balance it out. Um, so we've got, oh, sorry, I forgot to add high temps. So high temps allow N2 to react with O2 in the air to form um, nitrogen monoxide. That nitrogen monoxide can then go on to react further 
with oxygen in the air to form nitrogen dioxide. Um, so So again, we can put in an equation for that to support our, our response, and it would look something like this. And balancing it out. Um, so we've started off with saying, okay, one point, one mark for saying industrial furnaces or internal combustion engines are that human activity that's causing it. Another mark for saying that you're getting nitrogen reacting with oxygen in those high temperature environments. Uh, to form NO, and then another mark for saying that that NO will react further with oxygen to uh, in the air to form NO2 and putting that equation with it. So we've got at least one, two, three marks there. Um, we are just focusing on, on nitrogen oxides. We could talk about ozone as well, but we'll leave that for now. Um, and then at least another mark for talking about um, the action taken. And so I would say that extra mark would be the use of the equations throughout to to uh, exemplify the points. So we've got one mark here, one mark here, one mark here. Um, another mark I would put in the idea that in order to reduce um, the amount of nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere, we're going to use that catalytic converters. So inside cars, we've got catalytic converters that will convert um, that harmful NO2 or even harmful NO um, into something a bit more friendly that isn't going to react in the environment. So and I've run out of space there, but what we could say then is that the equation that would go with that now in order for those catalytic converters to work, they're not just converting the night nitric oxides, they actually convert carbon monoxide as well. Um, so it converts carbon monoxide and the nitric oxides into CO2, which is a less harmful gas than carbon monoxide and our nitrogen, and then balancing it out like that. So I would say that's another mark for that. So we've got five marks there and two marks for our communication. So um, how, how you've written out, whether you've used full sentences, whether it's, um, easy to understand, logical, you haven't repeated too much. Um, but that's a very common example of a, a question where it's getting you to, to link how nitrogen will form um, NO2 in the end and the equations associated with that. We could go further and talk about the equations uh, to produce ozone, but I'm going to talk about that in a sec. So another really, really common question is talking about the harmful effects of of ozone pollution. So uh, we've mentioned ozone, but we haven't gone into too much detail about ozone. Um, but the idea is that when you've got that nitrogen dioxide, it can react um, with UV light um, to produce a nitric oxide plus atomic oxygen. Now, normally oxygen likes to be O2. When it's atomic oxygen, it doesn't want to stay that way. It wants to react quite quickly. So that atomic oxygen will react with oxygen, oh, sorry, oxygen in the air to produce ozone. Um, and so this is a, kind of the next set of equations that we would want to use for, for ozone production. Now this question is just asking us to identify the harmful effects of ozone. And the idea is that ozone is only really helpful. So if this is the Earth, let's just get another color. Um, we've got kind of like our first layer above the Earth which is our troposphere, I'm just going to call it trop, and that goes for about the first 10 k's. Um, and then after that we've got kind of our, our ozone layer, and then we've got the rest of the, the stratosphere about 50 k's up. And so our ozone layer is around, around here approximately, ozone. Um, and so while ozone itself is important, it's only really valuable when it's in that ozone layer. If it gets into the troposphere, it can actually do some damage. And one of the main things it's going to do, um, it's going to irritate the eyes and respiratory system. So our eyes, 
um, and I'm not going to draw a picture of the lungs because I'm not very good at it. So it's, it can irritate the eyes and the respiratory system or the respiratory tract. Um, it also can degrade polymers, so degradation of polymers. So polymers are, are plastics that we'll learn about more later in the year, but polymers are, are present in quite a few different everyday materials. So things like plastic bags um, are made out of polymers. And so that's why plastic bags don't tend to break down very easily, but when they're left out um, in the sun for a really long period of time, they start to break up um, and then get broken up into just like those little bits of plastic. And that's because it requires um, that UV light to interfere with it. So this UV is where our photochemical reaction is coming in. So we haven't really talked about why it's called photochemical smog, and it's because that there is uh, photochemical reactions involved. And when we talk about photochemical reactions, we're talking about reactions that require a specific wavelength of light for that reaction to occur. And so with that, like we said before, um, with, when we were producing just um, nitric oxide from, from N2, that was not a photochemical reaction. That was just using heat energy, um, producing NO, and then that NO went on to produce nitrogen dioxide. But it's when that nitrogen dioxide then goes and um, interacts with that UV light, we get um, that NO and the atomic oxygen. So just a star to show that it's... It's uh, like a free radical, and that free radical then goes reacts with oxygen to produce ozone. And it's the ozone and the nitric, nitrogen dioxide that are some of the main causes of that photochemical smog. When you say nitrogen, uh, sorry, nitric oxides in general, but nitrogen dioxide is also quite harmful. In fact, nitrogen dioxide, um, it also irritates the eyes and the respiratory system. Um, but it's the nitrogen dioxide that tends to contribute to that haze um, that you get when, when you're seeing smog. And so this is another very uh, common, common question to be asked, um, identifying the harmful effects of ozone or nitrogen dioxide. Um, it says pollution in the troposphere. Now, that is just asking for harmful effects in general. Sometimes it will ask for environmental effects. And so then you just have to be careful with your responses that you're not giving everything. Because if we're talking about the environment, um, we don't really care that much about degradation of polymers, for example. Oh, sorry, there was uh, another one for ozone that I, I forgot. So another harmful effect is that it reduces photosynthesis. And the idea is that those plant leaves um, it starts to get stuff on, on the leaves and it damages um, the stomata. And the stomata uh, will allow gases to go in and out of the, the cells. And so if it can't get the gases in and out of the cells, it can't do photosynthesis and the plants will eventually die. Um, and so that was a, another... So those are the three common um, react, uh, questions that get asked. So talking about why we get that N2 bond in the first place, sorry, why, why we get that N2 bond breaking in the first place, um, the reactions that lead up to um, photochemical smog, and also harmful effects of ozone pollution in the troposphere. There's one more thing I just wanted to mention, and that's about pollutants in general. So when we talk about pollutants, we can classify them into primary, so one zero means primary, so primary pollutants or secondary. And primary just means that they were um, emitted directly from a source. Whereas secondary means that they had to be made from another um, pollutant. So uh, formed from reaction with another with or with a primary or another pollutant.
So often you get questions asked about is this a primary or a secondary pollutant? So for example, um, cars, when we have combustion of, of fuels, um, let's just say octane, which is C8H18, we can bust that with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and uh, water. But commonly when we have incomplete combustion, oh, so that's not balanced, I'm just going to leave that for now. So when we have incomplete combustion, we also get carbon monoxide plus soot formed. Um, and this carbon monoxide can be considered to be a primary pollutant because it's coming directly from the combustion of that. And that can then go off and do other things. It's harmful. It's a poisonous, colorless gas, and it's not good for us. Okay, so um, that's it for photochemical smog. Um, might be another video for AAS later on. We'll see how we go. Thank you. Say hi.